Good evening, everyone, once again. Uh, God has given one more day to uh, praise Him and to study His Word. So we are here, and I believe everyone is doing well. Okay, um, let's turn to Psalm number 94. Today we'll study about, I have posted, the God of Vengeance. God is the God of Vengeance. Uh, before we have studied that uh, God is love and you know God love us, God love human beings and He saved by dying on the cross. So all this, the character of God, uh, many things we learn. So today uh, we will learn about uh, God's anger or God is the God of Vengeance. Okay. Um, it's a little bit long, but I will read uh, some number 94 verses 1 to 15. Uh, let me read. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs, O God, to whom vengeance belongs, sign forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth, render punishment to the proud. Lord, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked triumph? They utter speech and speak insolent things. All the workers of iniquity boast in themselves. They break in pieces your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay uh, the widow and the strangers and murder the fatherless. Yet they say the Lord does not see, nor does the God of Jacob understand. Understand you senseless among the people. And you fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, shall he not hear? He who formed the eye, shall he not see? He who instructs the nation, shall he not correct? He who teaches man knowledge, the Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are futile. Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not curse off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance, but judgment will return to righteousness, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Okay, may God bless each one of us uh, through reading his holy word. If you have time, you can read a uh, whole uh, chapter of uh, some number 94 you can read then uh, I, I read only up to 15 okay so uh, here we can uh, know the you know uh, God is the God of vengeance so first thing this is what uh, we can know and secondly here in this text God digs a pit for the wicked. Even, you know, if the wicked seems to be victorious in this world, but when the pit is dark, God uh, throws the wicked into it. At the, you know, uh, that is the, their destiny. And uh, third, we will think about this in this world there are people who are taught by the law of god they are blessed so as we see in verse 12 and also um for the goodness and severity of god we can find god is uh, good and fifth judgment will return to righteousness so for the just the uh, you know, God knows our heart, and to the just, God will deal, and they will receive the you know righteous things will come to them. That's what uh, we can learn from uh, this passage. What we read. So, okay, let's go back now. Verse uh, number one: God is the God of vengeance. Verse one. Let me read again. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs, O God, to whom vengeance belongs, sign forth. Uh, the psalmist says here uh, twice, right? 
vengeance belongs to God, vengeance belongs to God. This is a very important and very serious matter and uh, really horrible. But it is, uh, we cannot deny it, there's a truth. That, uh, there's a truth, that's why um, God said God is the God of vengeance, that's what the psalmist say. Uh, why why he say this because of man's sin and iniquities you know uh, we know we have learned already God is omniscient omnipotent and omnipre omnipresent so only God can judge man rightly and only God can avenge their sins on them because God is a, a perfect person he's a perfect and he knows perfectly everyone and uh, uh, he knows the perfect who really commit the sin and who really uh, do the right so he knows perfectly so he is the right uh, person to judge or avenge for their sin so here um, verse 3 to 7 let me read again verse 3 Lord how long will the wicked how long will the wicked triumph they utter speech and speak insolent things all the workers of iniquity uh, just one minute all the workers of iniquity boast in themselves they break in pieces your people O Lord and afflict your heritage they stay the widow and the stranger and mother the fatherless yes they say the Lord does not see nor does the God of Jacob understand so these are the wicked people you know they do all kind of uh, torture other people they slay the widows and uh, strangers and they mother the fatherless but what they say uh, they say the Lord does not see nor does the God of Jacob understand that's what they say so uh, when we look, when we look at the wicked people you know it seems like they're prosperous time being but the end for them there's judgment is waiting uh, why now why God doesn't uh, God doesn't judge immediately the wicked even if they commit sins of course Bible give right explanation about about that right we know because the reason is God is a long-suffering and he is merciful God is merciful he is long-suffering okay let's turn to second Peter second Peter chapter 3 verse 8 and 9 if anyone can read if you can turn please read whoever maybe turn first Verse, uh, chapter 3, 2nd Peter, chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Okay, let me read. 2nd Peter, chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. 8 and 9. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that anyone, any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah, thank you, sister. So, what we see here, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. God is eternal. So, for us, maybe it, it's a long time, but for, for God, it is like one day. And verse 9 is very important, the reason we can see. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want anyone to be perish. So he's, it's not that he's not keeping his word. He will, you know, he will judge the wicked people, but he has a long-suffering, and that's the reason he is waiting. Because of the long suffering, he loved us. He loved everyone to repent, and that's the reason. You know, uh, God is not uh, ju judging the sinners right away. 
immediately. But God wants uh, them to repent. Actually, if God, uh, you know, if God judges immediately the sinners, then we also we 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 may not have the chance to come to God or to repent. So God keep His promise, but He has a, He is long suffering towards us. That's why He's waiting, so that even single soul may not perish. Okay, number two. God digs a pit for the wicked. Um, God is not only merciful. Some people think God is God of love and He is merciful, but we know God is also righteous. So He cannot tolerate the one who does not repent, who continue to sin. He cannot tolerate because He is righteous, He is just. If anyone does not repent, and stick to sinning God cannot help them from punishment they will be they will sure receive the punishment so here we see in uh, let's go back to our um, text Psalm number 94 verse 13 now we will read verse 13 you can bookmark um, Psalm number 94 so we'll come back again and again there um, verse 13 verse 13 I will read that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. Here it says, until the pit is dug for the wicked. That's what here it says. So when the pit is dug fully, the wicked will enter it definitely. God digs the pit God prepare for the wicked the pit and we know if we read the Old Testament the history about uh, about if uh, the Bible and about the uh, people who are against Israel people we know God prepare for them like a uh, Assyria the empire, Assyrian Empire and Roman Empire or the Greece Empire, we can see. And also Babylonian, right? We know. Okay, let's turn to Nahum. Nahum chapter 1 verse 14. <coughs> Nahum chapter uh, 1 verse 14. Can anyone? Nahum chapter 1 verse 14. Any volunteer? Let me read. Now in chapter 1 verse 14. The Lord has given a command concerning you. Your name shall be perpetuated no longer out of the house of your gods. I will cut off the carved image and the molded image. I will dig your grave for you are a vile. Thank you. So this one, this is prophecy about the Assyria. Now Assyria, they are so wicked. So now, the Lord has given a command concerning you. Your name shall be perpetuated no longer out of the house of your gods. I will cut up the curved image and the molded image. Last verse here, I mean last line here it says, I will dig your grave for you are vile. I will bury you. That means I will bury you. So I prepare for you grave, a city. You know, we know our Syria are very wicked people. That's why when uh, you remember, right, um, Jonah. Jonah was sent to Assyria, Nineveh. But he was going toward to Tars Tarsus because he knew that if he go and preach, he, he, if he go and warn the people, then they will repent and God will forgive them. But you know, uh, Jonah doesn't want that because Assyrian people are very wicked. So he don't want them to repent. He want that God punish them. So we know that story. So um, we can understand how wicked they are. The great empire was destroyed by enemy, by other nation. And you know, Assyria disappeared.
from the earth. They were buried under the earth as its prophesied by the flood and also in the underground. The, the city, Assyrian city disappeared. God also has prepared the bottomless pit as we read in the uh, book of Revelation. You know, for whom? For the Satan, for the angels who had, uh, you know, fallen angels who left God. When Jesus comes again, Satan and all the devils are captured into the bottomless pit. For how many years? For a thousand years. After that, they will be released for a little, little while, little time, and uh, they try to deceive the nations again. Because that's the work of Satan. That's their business, to deceive people, to take away into, uh, from, the, from the Lord. And then, they all are thrown into the lake of fire. There is the, the end of destiny. The devil's destiny, the uh, Satan's destiny. And those who follow, they also, of course, they will be thrown into the lake of fire. All unsafe people will be judged before the white throne judgment. And then they all also are thrown into the lake of fire. But now, for us, we are delivered from this pit of destruction. For the wicked, God is, you know, uh, digging the pit. He dig the pit. Remember that. Let's go to Isaiah. Book of Isaiah, chapter 38, verse 17. Isaiah, chapter 38, verse 17. Please, anyone? Oh, oh, 38, verse 17. Yeah, 38, verse 17. Okay. Indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness, but you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my feet behind your back. Yeah, thank you. So this is what Isaiah said. You have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. So those who are safe, they are, you know, they are out from the pit of corruption, means from the hell of fire. So the, the moment we born in this world, we are going towards to death, towards to eternal hell. But when we believe Jesus Christ, we, you know, we pass over that. We, uh, so Jesus came to uh, change our destiny. So here um, we see that um, you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. For you have cast all my sins behind your back. Now Jesus has taken all our sin. All the wicked will be uh, you know, uh, in the pit of eternal hellfire that is prepared by God for them. And for those who believe Jesus Christ, they will be guided by God and they will be with the Lord, with God. Uh, let's go back again. Now, um, number three. Number three, uh, verse 12, let me read. 94 of some. Oh, from our text, let's go to our passage, um, verse 12. Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law. Blessed is the man whom you instruct. So, who those who uh, follow the instruction of the Lord, they will be blessed. So, vengeance is pronounced. But blessings are also mentioned. In the process of our growth or our Christian's life growth, sometimes we may go through suffering. And all this, you know, incident or suffering or whatever troubles, affliction may come in our life, but all these are given by God to make you know, make us complete or make us perfect. That's what Bible in Colossians it says. 
So through the suffering, through the uh, troubles, affliction, we become complete. We we uh, we uh, we become perfect. We goes through the days of adversity. So here, uh, Sami says, let let me read again verse thirteen, that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. A person blessed by God, we may have the days of adversity, but, you know, um, we are out from the pit of corruption. From time to time, you know, we are under the days of adversity. As we uh, Christians are getting mature, we can face greater trials, actually. Of course, God knows how much we can carry, how much we can face. So according to that, God will allow. But after what? Afterwards, we get rest and peace from God. That's what here it says. That you may give him rest from the days of adversity. Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law, that you may give him rest from the days of adversity, until the pit is dug for the wicked. The righteous go into rest. And when the pit is dug fully for the wicked, the wicked fall into death. For the wicked, pit is dug. And, you know, they may enjoy in this world, but after some time, they will be into death. Okay, uh, number four. Let's go to... Uh, Okay, I will read verse 18 and 19. If I say my food sleeps, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. The goodness and severity of God. Um, in Romans chapter 11, verse 22, if you read, you will find that the goodness and severity of God. Um, the Lord, God shows our mercy in Jesus Christ. So, whoever is in Jesus Christ, they are happy. And whoever in whoever is in Jesus Christ, they are guided by God. God, God guides us when we believe Jesus Christ. We become the children of God, and we are guided by God. And also, God comfort us. God comfort his children. So here uh, verse 18 says, if I say my if I say my food sleeps, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. Even maybe we fall down, we, we maybe sleeps. Our food step, but God will hold us. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. We may have anxiety because the world is against us, but he comforts us. So when we read his word, when we, we get a comfort, right? When we listen, we get a comfort. God is mercy. At the same time, remember, God is also fearful. He is strict. He cannot tolerate unrepentant heart. He is very serious about that. So he is very fearful to the people who reject Christ. He is merciful. So he because of his mercy, we everyone are welcome. But those who don't want to come to him, for them God is so fearful. God, Bible said, God is consuming fire. So God holds the goodness and also severity. So verse 20 says, 
like this uh, here verse 20 let me read sell the throne of sell the throne of iniquity which devises evil by law have fellowship with you they are sinner before God so uh, the psalmist one uh, here especially to the false you know uh, religionist sell the throne of iniquity which devises evil by law have fellowship with you they are sinners before God how severe will be their punishment when Jesus come when Jesus return and he judged the people you know we we know in the time of Jesus Jews religious people Jews leaders Jews rulers killed Jesus and persecuted his disciples right we know the history so even today also same the people who say they are relying on the Bible they read the Bible they say the religious leaders but you know uh, they persecute and oppress the true Christians many persecution comes through the so-called Christians to the truly Christians but remember God will defend them God will uh, God God is with them why because God is consuming fire okay um let's go to now verse 15 number five judgment will return to righteousness verse 15 but judgment will return to righteousness and all the upright in heart will follow it judgment will return to righteous righteousness why because God is on the side of righteousness so now what we should do as a God's children we also we need to respond we need to be on God's side we need to stand on God's side we need to stand with God we must build our spiritual house according to the Word of God so uh, we may not be collapsed you know uh, we have to build a house strong according to the Word of God and we have to build a house enough to endure the judgment seat of Christ so we know what is the judgment of seat, the judgment seat of Christ that is as a Christians will be judged will we have to stand in front of Jesus Christ but not God Jesus will judge us not to send in eternal hell but to you know to recognize what we have done for him to give us reward so that's why uh, Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 say I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me and I will give according to its work and um, second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 also say we all have to stand before the judgment of uh, judgment seat of Jesus Christ so we need to uh, take care everything how we live how we uh, you know how we behave as a Christians so let's try to be always on the side of the Lord the righteous judgment will return to righteousness he is just he knows everything so whatever we do that good things will come back to us to the righteous people okay uh, for today uh, this much 
I will stop here. Let me pray. Let's pray. Mighty Heavenly Father, thank you once again for teaching us your word. And today uh, we have learned that uh, you are God of vengeance and now you are quiet but Lord when the time comes you pit you dug a pit for them for the wicked people until you return if they don't return, repent and come back to you Lord they will be thrown into the pit but Lord for us you have saved us from the pit and Lord now we have a hope to be with you and we will be living eternally with you so Lord thank you so much and now you want us to live righteous life you want to you want us to do what you command you want us to do what you please so Lord help us so that we can do in our Christian's life for your glory for your kingdom and you wants you want to give us reward you want to bless us so thank you so much once again and uh, thank you for giving this opportunity and continue to bless us until we meet with you in Jesus name I pray amen okay thank you over to Brother Adani. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pastor. And on behalf of all the brothers and sisters, we'd like to thank our pastor. Today, I think we finished a little bit uh, earlier than other days. So, you know, it's uh, short, sweet, and, you know, thought provocative. It's a wonderful lesson for all of us. Today, we have learned that God also expresses His wrath. God also judges, right? So... The judgment could be, you know, it can mean many things. So, of course, this is about, you know, God's chastisement, God's discipline. And it could be so many things. Sometimes God remains, you know, silent, seems to be silent. But it is not that God is, you know, not slack concerning his promise. But uh, because, you know, he is merciful and he is...